Welcome to this NPTEL lectures on robotics, basics and advanced concepts. In this week, we have been looking at application of parallel robots. In this last lecture or example this week, we will look at the use of a Stuart platform for vibration isolation. Okay, so a quick acknowledgement. This is the work and thesis research of Nazir Ahmed. He is a student from ISRO. So the contents of this lecture is to start with will be a motivation why we want to use Stuart platform for vibration isolation. Then the modeling of the Stuart platform for vibration isolation. Then I will show you some simulation results and some initial experimental results and then conclude this lecture. So one of the main motivation of a Stuart platform or vibration isolation device, any other vibration isolation device, is that in a spacecraft, there are on orbit vibrations. Okay, so we have things like reaction wheels, which are RW, and then there are other devices which generate small micro vibrations in a spacecraft. And once these micro vibrations are generated, it takes a long time to die out, basically because the spacecraft is made out of aluminum, with very little damping. Okay. And any sensor which is attached to the spacecraft, so for example, a camera or any other optical device, which can be used to take images of the Earth or for inter satellite link communications, these devices' performance will degrade because they are vibrating. So they will not be looking at the same place or they will not be sending the signal in the same direction all the time. So most of the time, these on orbit vibrations are there. Okay, so basically it starts when you deploy an appendage. So for example, if you want to deploy a solar panel, there'll be some vibrations which will be set up and which will take some time. We also have firing of thrusters to change the orbit or change the attitude of a spacecraft once in a while. Okay. So these thruster firing or LAM firing will again introduce some vibration. One of the major sources of vibration is this momentum wheel and reaction wheels. Okay, so basically you have these momentum and reaction wheels to make sure that you don't waste energy in trying to correct the small errors. Okay, this is like a gyroscope. So it will try to maintain the orientation of the spacecraft or the camera or whatever else you have on the spacecraft. The spacecraft also has some pumps to circulate some liquid for cooling and so on. So all these causes vibration when it is in orbit. So most of the time we need to have some isolation device between the spacecraft body and the sensor. Okay, we have multiple sources of noise multi-axis sources of noise. So this noise could be in the X, Y, Z, or even rotation directions. Typically, it is of the order of 1000 micro G RMS, mu G RMS, with a peak value of 3000 micro G spread over a bandwidth up to 250 Hertz. Okay, so what we need is a multi-axis vibration isolation system, meaning what? That we need to isolate vibrations from in coming from different directions and different sources. We need to isolate all the degrees of freedom. That is the bottom line. So we want to find vibrations happening along X, Y, Z, and also the rotation directions, and we want to isolate. It is nice if the first six frequency of isolator are decoupled in a narrow bandwidth, okay? so. The X frequency, Y and Z frequency, and similarly, the rotation frequencies are if very close to each other, then we can use a tuned mass damper, which can effectively isolate all the frequencies in the same way. Okay, remember, if, if you go back and remember your vibration curve, so it is horizontal and then peaks, and then again it decays. Now, the peak is the natural frequency of the vibration. So if these natural frequencies are very close to each other, 
then I can design a damper which will work for <coughs> all the six uh, degrees of freedom. A six axis Stuart platform can provide isolation in six direction and is thus an initial natural choice. Okay, Stuart platform has six degrees of freedom. I can somehow cook up something in each one of the legs such that the forces and moments which are coming on the base or on the top platform or maybe let's say at the base from the spacecraft does not get transmitted to the top platform. That is what we want to do. So we want to design a Stuart Gov platform based multi-axis vibration isolation system for onboard isolation. Okay, that is our goal. So we can define the equations of motion of a Stuart platform in terms of five parameters. Okay, so what are these five parameters? It is the radius of the top platform, the radius of the base platform, the angle alpha between two points. So between B1 and B6, we have two alpha. So this alpha is one such parameter because I can place these connection points on the periphery of the circle in different ways. I can choose this angle uh, alpha. Similarly, this beta is the angle in the top platform between two connection points. So actually two beta is the angle between two connection points. And then we have this height h of the top platform with respect to the bottom platform. So these are the geometrical parameters which are natural in a Stuart platform. And we can derive the equations of motion of a Stuart platform in Cartesian coordinates that this is what X means. X means X, Y, Z and orientation. Remember, we have discussed equations of motion in joint space or in Cartesian space. Okay, so we can derive it as in Cartesian space. So then we can find the eigenvalues of this function, which is K minus M omega square. So this EX dot GX and Coriolis term and all these terms are not very important when you are considering vibration because it is not moving much. Okay, so for the eigenvalue problem, we have assumed that the base is fixed. There are these joints are all frictionless. Okay, and hence only in some sense omega is square root of k by m. Okay, k is coming from the stiffness matrix and m is coming from the mass matrix. So we have developed this model of the Stuart platform also in atoms. So not only can we solve these equations of motion with appropriate, appropriate assumptions and find the eigenvalue of this matrix k by m, okay, or this eigenvalue problem we can solve and obtain the eigenfrequencies, but we can also go to atoms and obtain the frequencies. So now we want to do some kind of optimization because we have these five parameters R A, R B, alpha, beta, H. So how do we choose these five parameters such that we get what we want to desire? What we desire is that the eigenfrequencies are very close to each other. Why? Because we can design dampers which can then damp out all the six components of the force and moments or six components of the vibration, the first six components. Okay, so what do we want to do in this optimization problem? We frame uh, objective function, which is minimize quantity kappa, which is omega max by omega min. Okay, so what is omega max and omega min? They are the eigenvalues of the k minus m omega square, that eigenvalue problem. And these are subject to some restrictions. Okay, so there is clearly some restriction available for RA and RB. So we don't want very large or very small RA and RB. We also cannot have angles more than 120 degrees because then it will get the second, you know, then we don't have six points. Likewise, there are natural restrictions on the height. In this case, we have assumed between zero and 150 mm. Okay. And then this mass of the top platform is some constant. The inertia of the top platform is another constant. The location of the CG of the top platform is another vector, which is a constant. This is a matrix. And then this stiffness 
is a constant. Okay, so this MPLD inertia and the location of the CG are fixed by payload and KL is fixed by the required frequency. So we do this optimization problem, we solve this optimization problem and then we find the natural frequencies obtained with ZCG equal to zero. So ZCG is the location of the CG in the top platform. Okay, we can also have the CG below the top platform. So what you can see is that the first six natural frequencies, which is theta z rotation, theta y about rotation about x, y, and z, and motion about x, y, and z are 51.25, 39.25, and so on, and 30.09, okay? The modal vectors, you can see that these are the frequencies about theta z, because these are 0, 0, 1. Theta y is not exactly modal vector, except that it is this. there is a, some small coupling. Theta x is also exactly not along the x-axis, but there are some small components in the other direction, and likewise, X motion along Z is exactly along the Z, but the X and Y are not exactly along the X and Y. Okay, nevertheless, they are very close. So as you can see, this is 0 0.99. This is also 0 0.99. So there is some small component. Okay, we can also find the natural frequencies and the mode shapes after optimization with the location of the CG below the top plate. Okay, then also you can see that it varies from 51.25 to 33.98. Here it was from 51 to 30. Okay, so what is the ratio? 5 by 3. Okay, so it is like 1.68 or 1.7, that top up. Whereas if you let the CG fall below, then this ratio is smaller. We want the ratio to be close to unity as possible, okay. So initially for table 2.1, kappa is 1.7, whereas kappa is 1.6 if you let the CG below it. Also, it is very nice to see that even if you change or allow the CG to go up and down, so from minus 18 to minus 53, okay, meaning what? it need not go down too much below the top platform. We can see that the kappa stabilizes at 1.6, okay, for a large range from about minus 18 mm to 53 mm. So this gives us a freedom to design the Stuart platform based vibration isolator. Okay, so as you reduce Z, it is going down, then stabilizes, and then again it goes up. So this is in some sense the optimum range for location of the weight or the payload from the top platform. Minus means it is below. So we built one Stuart platform. So as you can see, this is the top platform. This is the bottom platform. We have flexural joints at each ends. So this is like this flexural joints, which we discussed in the last lecture also. These are hinge joints. Okay, the stiffness are basically circular plates, okay? These are called circular plate springs. So in the leg, we have some stiffness, okay? We also did characterization test. So these are called base fixed model survey tests, okay? So what is done? A constant acceleration sign sweep input signal of amplitude 0.5 G is used. The test is done in lateral and longitudinal directions. Uh, accelerometer, a three-axis accelerometer is mounted at the center of the top and bottom platform to find the vibration levels. And the frequency response function is obtained between the top and bottom platform with the acceleration measurement. Okay, the magnitude of the cross FRFs were found to be small, okay, between the different directions of excitation. So here is a plot of the computed 
and the experimental FRF which was obtained from that Stuart platform. So we could compute the Stuart platform because we have a CAD model. We can find that the frequency FRF looks like this. It will go like this. So the resonance is around 30 hertz and then it will come down. Okay. Whereas the experimental one is the red one which looks a little bit different but nevertheless it is of the similar shape. So this is at 30, this is a little bit after 30. There is a dip and a rise because of another mode in this in the blue one and the similarly there is a dip and a rise due to another mode in the red one. The longitudinal Z mode okay, translating up and down about the Z axis, the top platform, we can again compute the Z mode and also experimentally measure the Z mode. So these are the basic modes which you could measure in the current setup. Okay, So the Z mode, the peak is a little after 35 and the experimental ones are also very similar. And what you can see is that the slope of this curve, this red curve or the blue curve after the resonance is like 19.1 dB per octave. Okay, so this is a number which tells you how much isolation you have obtained. Okay, so the larger this number, the more isolation you have obtained. So 19.1 is slightly on the lower side. We would like to get something like 30 dB per octave okay, for as vibration isolation. So in conclusion, I have showed you a six axis Stuart curve platform that can be used for vibration isolation. So basically we have a top platform, bottom platform and in between we have these legs and whatever is the vibration which is happening in the base or the top platform does not get transmitted because we have played around with these parameters of the top platform, bottom platform, which are the two radii and the two angles, which are the connection points, the height and so on. So there are five parameters which you can play around and we use an optimization problem to find out those five parameters which gave a ratio of the maximum natural frequency frequency to the minimum natural frequency of 1.6. Okay, ideally we would like more. Okay, so this kind of vibration isolation systems can be used in spacecraft. Okay, so you can isolate the payload in spacecraft. As I said, ideally all eigenvalues should be same. Okay allows all modes to be equally well damped and isolated, but this is not so for this Stuart platform which was fabricated and tested. So this work is continuing and we hope to have different configuration Stuart platforms which can give a kappa of one where all the natural frequencies are very close to each other. Okay, so with this I will stop. Thank you for listening.